Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to go ahead and start looking at this pre-calculus semester one review, and we're going to look at numbers one through 14. So again, my goal today is going to be to go through these first two columns where it's got the question and the first um, solving portion. And then your goal will be to be able to complete this second column right here, or sorry, this third column, not second, excuse me, this third column that has questions that are really similar to the ones over here. Um, that way you can work to solve it and, and practice yourself. So taking a look at this first one, it says the data table shows the average number of likes on an Instagram uh, for a Super Bowl halftime show by five minute intervals. The halftime show started at 10.15 and ended at 10.40. So the first question they ask us over here in part A says, what is the average, average rate of change for the number of likes from the beginning of the halftime show until the end include units? So remember, average rate of change, this is really just cueing us into the fact that we're going to use slope, which if you remember, slope is that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 formula. That's all it's cueing us into. We are using slope. The reason it's not called slope, though, is because the formulas that we're looking at don't usually happen as linear formulas, so it's not referred to as slope. So I need the first two points. They wanted us to figure out the beginning and the end of the halftime show. So what I'm going to need to do is pull out the point from the beginning and the point from the end. So if I look here, the point at the beginning would be 1015. At 1015, there were 26 million likes. So my first point is 10... 15 and 26 million likes. And then the point at the end is that at 1040, there were 88 million likes. So 1040, there were 88 million likes. Notice that they're in millions, but I'm not going to write the number 26 million, 88 million. We'll just keep track of that when we get to the end of this problem. So we're going to go ahead and get this set up. Do our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I've got y2 minus y1, so 88 minus 26, divided by x2 minus x1, which we're subtracting time here. That's kind of weird, but 1040 minus 1015. So essentially, that bottom part is just saying how much time has passed since we started the halftime show. So on the top, 88 minus 26 is going to give us 62. And on that bottom, 1040 minus 1015, a better way to think about that is how many minutes have passed between 1015 to 1040. I know that's going to be 25 minutes, and I'll just leave it like that so we can see it. So in 25 minutes, there was an average rate of change of 62 million likes. So I want to write that out and figure out that simplified. So I'm going to take 62 and divide it by 25 on my calculator, which I know you can't see. But when I do that, ooh, I didn't want to do that. I'm sorry. When I do that, I get 2.48. Now, they did say right here to include the units in the problem, so I need to make sure I do that. Remember what this represents is likes per minute. The top was likes, the bottom was per minute. So this is 2.48 likes per minute, but that's weird because you can't have half a like. But remember, it's not, uh, it's not in singles. This is likes per in millions, or I'm in millions. So 2.48 million likes per minute was what was happening. All right, the next part here says, if possible, name the approximate intervals where the number of likes strictly increases. So what I'm gonna do is go over here and look at this again, and we're looking at this problem. So if I start at the beginning here, when I'm moving over, when I move down this pathway, we're looking for situations where it is increasing. So from 10.15 to 10.20, there is an increase. It increases to 48. But when we go from 10.20 to 10.25, it goes down 37 million. It didn't mean the number of likes that were happening got taken off. It just means that there were less likes during that part. So maybe this opening act, people were really excited because they've been waiting for the halftime show. But now it's kind of started and this is just the opener act. So we're not getting as many likes. But then right here, the opening act comes on, right? So now we're getting in likes a lot. They've increased. Again, not that they're going down. It's just happening at a quicker pace in those spots. So what they want us to do then is they want us to find the spots increasing. So we said right away, it's increasing from 10.15 to 10.20. So right here, I'm going to put 10.15, comma, 10.20. And then we see that there's a decrease from 10.20 to 10.25, but at 10.25, it increases again 
till 1030, and it really increases till 1035. Um, but then it looks like it goes down again. So it looks like the only other increasing interval is 1025 to 1035. So we're going to put a union and 1025 comma 1035. And that would represent our intervals of increasing situations. All right, so number two says, Roger bought a new toy helicopter. Actually, honestly, like there's a lot of blah, 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 blah here. But if you read the question, it just says, find the average rate of change between each of the following points. So you don't even need to read all this. This is all just pointless. It doesn't mean anything. It's there to trick you. All we really care about is the fact that we've got these six points right here, and we want to find the average rate of change between them. So looks like my first one was B and D. So I want to find the average rate of change between B and D was part A. So we've got Y2 minus Y1, so 60 minus 38 when I subtract this Y2 minus this Y1 divided by X2 minus X1, so I've got 4 minus 1. So that gives me 22 over 3. Again, pull out that calculator, 22 divided by 3 gives us 7.3 repeating. So I'm just going to put 7.33. Next one says to do D and F. So coming over here, let's see. D is this one. F is this one. So we're going to do D and F. Same process. We're going to do everything still the same. Y2 minus Y1, so 0 minus 60 over x2 minus x1, so 5 minus 4. 0 minus 60 is negative 60, and 5 minus 4 is 1. So the average rate of change here is negative 60. And one last one. Now we've got to determine c to e. So c is at 233. e is a decimal, 4.85 and 33. That's OK, though. So in the numerator, we're going to have y2 minus y1, which is 33 minus 33. And in the denominator, we got x2 minus x1, so 4.85 minus 2. That's going to be 0 on top, 2.85 on the bottom. And anytime you take 0 and divide it by anything, it doesn't matter because you always just get 0. If the 0 is on top, you get 0. If the 0 is on the bottom, we'd say undefined. Number 3 says evaluate the difference quotient. Difference quotient is using this formula, and yes, they will give you this formula on your midterm. You don't have to remember that, but we need to make sure we can apply that formula. So I usually like to do it in two steps. I like to figure out what f of x plus h is, then I like to put it into the formula. So let's just start with that first step. Let's find f of x plus h. So here's an x, and here's an x. So those two x's, we're going to plug x plus h into them. So I have 5 x plus h squared plus 2. And again, we're going to take that eight x out and put x plus h instead. All right, and we're going to work through some things. You always got to start with your, your uh, exponents first. Don't distribute this 5 yet because you got to figure out what x plus h squared is first. Now, if you mess this up, the mistake a lot of people make is they go, oh, it's x squared plus h squared. No, that's not correct. We can't do that. You have to remember that x plus h squared is the same thing as saying x plus h times x plus h. So we're going to foil that together. So x times x is x squared. x times h is xh. h times x is another xh. And h times h is h squared. And, and let's not forget to bring down our plus 2x plus h. Keep that coming down. All right, and then I'm going to distribute. Actually, sorry, there's one more thing I can combine right here. I can combine that x plus h and that x plus h together. I'm going to just save myself some room right here. That's going to become 2xh. Now we'll go ahead and distribute the 5 and distribute the 2 here. So I've got 5x cubed plus 10xh plus 5h squared, and then plus 2x plus 2h. So now that I've got this piece, this, this x plus h, now I can plug it into the formula. I'm going to take f of x plus h and subtract f of x from it and then divide by h. Again, you got that formula over there to look at, so use it to help you. So I've got 5x cubed plus 10xh plus 5h squared plus 2x 
plus 2h minus the original function, which I'm going to put in parentheses, 5x squared plus 2x all over h. And so the reason I put this in parentheses, we got to remember that this negative gets distributed, which ultimately causes just one thing to happen. 5x cubed, this becomes, uh, that shouldn't have been 5x cubed. How did I do that? Whoa, I hope y'all didn't get confused here. Sorry, that was 5x squared. I don't know what I did there. Anyways, 5x squared cancels with this 5x squared because there's a minus. And this 2x cancels with this 2x because it's minus 2x. So when this negative distributes in, it makes it the opposite, and now they cancel with each other. And it leaves me with very little room left, so let's kind of shrink some of this and see if we can make some space here. Maybe I cannot. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning. I'm learning. You can just move this up for now. I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Okay, so what we know is going to happen now is I've got all this stuff left over. I've got this 10xh, I've got this plus 5h squared, and I've got this plus 2h all over h. So what I know is anywhere on the top, because I'm dividing by h, I can cancel 1h. So 10xh, this h gets to cancel. Over here at 5h squared, I get to cancel one of the h's, so now I just have plus 5h. And over here at 2h, I get to cancel the h on it, so it's plus 2. Meaning, again, my final answer in the correct order would be 10x plus 2 plus 5h. And there's my difference quotient. All right, on to that second page. For number 4, it just says, for each following, find the following things. And they gave us a few things for each one. So we're going to work through each one a little bit uh, and, and take our time here. So in this first one, it says to find the absolute value. If the function h of x has the absolute value of x minus 2, they want to start by plugging 8 in. So I'm going to take that and just do that. 8 minus 2 in the absolute value signs. Well, 8 minus 2 gives us the absolute value of 6. And ultimately, that comes out to just 6 is the answer. Now, this one ends up a little bit different. This one ends up a little bit uglier. Uh, so we're putting a negative 3x minus 12 this time. So I've got uh, this, this x again. We're replacing it with all of this. So x becomes negative 3x minus 12. And then there's this little minus 2 that's kind of hanging off on the side here. So we'll put minus 2, close our absolute value signs. And I don't think there's much to simplify other than the fact that this negative 12 and this negative 2 can come together. So it becomes the absolute value of negative 3x plus 14. I don't know why I put plus 14. I am tired. It's the end of the day on Friday. I'm going to make a few mistakes. I am sorry. This should be minus 14. Let's try that one last time. So it's going to end up looking something like that. And we're just going to leave it just like that. All right, for g of x, 2x squared minus 1, and we got two things to plug in. So for the g of 3, we're going to have 2, 3 squared minus 1. Again, we're just replacing that x. Now, we want to make sure we do our order of operations right here. So when I do this, I need to multiply the 3 and square it first. So 3 squared is 9. Make sure you do that first. Don't do 2 times 3 and then try to square 6. You'll get the wrong answer. Square the 3 and get 9, and then we work through this. 9 times 2 is 18. And 18 minus 1 is 17. Now, when I plug in the x plus 1, it's a little bit trickier. It's kind of like that difference quotient because when I replace this x with x plus 1, I get 2x plus 1 squared minus 1. So I'm going to need to figure out what x plus 1 squared is before I move on. Remember, don't distribute that 2 until you've squared this. So x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x x times 1 again is another x, and 1 times 1 is 1 minus 1. And we'll distribute that 2 now. So when I distribute that 2 in here, oh, actually, this right here, let's do this. So when I go and do this part here, these two x's are going to come together and make plus 2x. And now we can distribute that 2. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times 2x is plus 4x, and 2 times 1 is plus 2. And we still have that little minus one hanging out on the outside. So one more thing to simplify. At this point, because everything on the inside is simplified, I can actually subtract that one from our constant. So I end up with 2x squared 
plus 4x plus 1. And there's our answer. And bringing this down to the last one, now we got some piecewise functions. And what's important to remember with piecewise functions, when you have two functions like this, there is two equations we can plug into. You don't always plug it into both. You have to plug it into the one that it makes sense with. So for example, the first one asks us to plug negative.